Hey there everybody, this is Perry again. What I have here is uh, some drawings and information on uh, doing a machine interface conversion on the Hypertherm PowerMax 45. Now, uh, what I read was that all of the PowerMax 45s come with a machine interface connector. And uh, I brought up the uh, service manual for this, which has a schematic of the PowerMax 45. And if you look right here, where it says 14-pin CPC rear of unit, that is the machine interface connector. And if you look closely, it says CPC-5, CPC-6, and it says elect 50 to 1 work, arc voltage 50 to 1, minus 5 plus 6. So this is the voltage divider. It's a 50 to 1 ratio, and it's uh, 100K divided by 2K. So it's a fairly low impedance uh, voltage divider, and that appears on J22 on the main logic board for the plasma cutter. Now, if you look at the plasma cam instructions, this is the uh, diagram they provide where they show hooking directly into the raw arc voltage. Now, the reason that is is that plasma cam uses a 680K and a 33K resistor in the voltage divider, which is approximately 21.1 to 1. Now, the reason why that is sort of interesting is that Hypertherm on the PowerMax 85 and 65 has this little voltage divider board built into the machine. And as you can see right there, it says 21.1 to 1, 30, 40, 50, and then uh, there's another option that's 20 to 1. Now the 65 and 85, if we look at the schematic for that, there's a voltage divider here, and it says 20 to 1 voltage divider board. So the way the 6585 work is that they have a 20 to 1 ratio coming off of the main logic board, and then they have this little voltage divider board, which further divides it down into a programmable 20 to 50 to 1 ratio. Now if you have a plasma cam, that's really super handy. Uh, if you have a PowerMax 45, that particular feature is not available. So you end up having to tap into the raw arc voltage. And if you see it right here in the picture, that is J22 that's right here in the schematic. Now what I propose to do actually, instead of drilling a hole in the back of my uh, PowerMax 45 and routing all these cables through, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clip those two wires going to J22. I'm going to leave the connector and pigtail in there, and then I'm actually going to clip the cable that came from uh, plasma cam, and I'm going to use the 21.1 to 1 voltage divider that's built into the cable. I'm going to wire it in based on these picture instructions right here, but then I'm going to actually wire it into uh, the red and black wires that go to the CPC or circular plastic connector on the back of the machine. I have ordered the AMP uh, CPC connector uh, from Jameco uh, with the strain relief and the pins, and I'm going to crimp up my own cable using all of those components uh, so that I don't have to butcher the machine. Now the other part I don't have listed here or shown here is they want you to tap into the trigger signal. So uh, on the machine, you would have a zip tie on the trigger right here and then you would actually have a, a relay closure that interrupts that trigger signal inside the hypertherm. And that is, you know, kind of okay. Uh, you know, if you want to hack the machine, I'm not really wanting to hack the machine uh, in that regards. So what they, what Plasma Cam provides you is they provide you this little pigtail right here uh, for doing unit testing uh, when you're doing the initial install. And you'll see right here, it's not really easily, you know, uh, distinguished, but this is actually uh, a loopback. So what it does is it bypasses uh, the splice into the purple wire or the trigger signal. So that way you could still use the, uh, the hand torch. The problem with that is you've got this big cable hanging out the back of your plasma cutter, and you have this pigtail that you plug into it that shorts together just so you can use the plasma cutter with the hand torch. Um, 
I'm just not really happy with that. I mean, I bought a plasma cutter with a machine interface, and doggone it, I'm going to use the machine interface if I can. Now, the reason why this particular picture is useful is that you can see polarity here, red, black, and then it's got a negative voltage coming out of that voltage divider. Now, if you look right here, work is black, and you've got the red up here to the uh, electrode. And if you look at the actual uh, diagram right here, you'll see it says work, which is your ground clamp. That is arc, arc voltage positive, and then the electrode is arc voltage negative. So you've got black to arc voltage or to you know, arc voltage negative, whereas on the plasma cam, you're actually the other way around you've actually got negative on positive and positive on negative. That's important to know whenever you're hooking all of this up so you don't get the polarity backwards. That's why I printed out this picture showing the colors and this picture showing the colors and the negative voltage readout. And when you look at this, the positive right here is arc voltage because this is actually a you know, DC electrode negative. So your ground clamp is actually positive and your electrode is negative. Okay, and now let's actually look inside my machine right here. This is the J22. As you can see, it runs up inside the machine. It goes all the way to the back. It's nicely shielded. You know, no big deal. You've got your white connector here, which is raw arc voltage. That's your negative voltage. This is your positive voltage. And uh, so I'm going to have to make some crimp connector leads that go in here. And I'm going to use the torch interface cable that they provided. Now if you look carefully at this torch interface cable that PlasmaCam provided, you can see right here there's some swelling in the heat shrink. And what that is, is that's actually where the internal voltage divider is located uh, in line. And then they provide this you know, strain relief. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it back about right here and then I'm going to use this part to interface to the internal and then this right here is actually not going to be used I'm just gonna leave that pigtail out and this is going to actually be wired in uh, I'm gonna crimp some pins on it and it's gonna go into the CPC connector that goes on the back of the machine right there uh, it's an amp uh, I can uh, supply the part numbers um, that I found. Uh, there's two connectors. The the only difference between both of them when you search on AMP's website or you know TE Tyco Electronics is uh, the key. Uh, the key uh, is in a different place on both the connectors. Other than that, they're both a size 17, 14 pin CPC. And the one that goes to this begins with a two, and the other one is a completely different number. It's like two two oh two six four eight or something like that. But anyway, okay, enough of that. Okay, yeah, so this is the hack uh, completed. I've got my red here, my black here, and then they're connected to the corresponding red and black that. Uh, well, this is the end from plasma cam that's butchered off. And then this is red and black that goes to the back panel. So all I have to do is maintain the uh, appropriate uh, uh, you know, polarity. So because I left this little pigtail right here, this is totally reversible. All I got to do is just cut this back, strip it a little bit, and then push it back down in that connector. And it's like brand new. Nobody knows the difference. Okay, so here's the machine all put back together. You can see there's the CPC there, the 14-pin connector. And then uh, there's a, a little uh, knockout right there, which, curiously, is almost about like, yeah, it's actually that size right there. So, you know, Plasma Cam, they tell you to drill a hole right about here next to your air inlet. And I'm looking at this, and there's a perfect little spot right there where you could put this little connector and run it through, and it would be, you know, in a great spot, totally unobtrusive. But they tell you to put it right here. Go figure.